Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday in Split. When you're in marinas, you typically prefer to use the, the toilets and showers there to preserve water from the boat. Um, and it's just, yeah, nicer. So we're making Italian coffee. These ovens are quite interesting in that they rotate on these axles here. So no matter what the uh, orientation of the ship, this thing will stay vertical like that. Pretty ingenious. Taking off the bimini. Interesting on some of these larger yachts, they have uh, shock absorbers where they tie to the pier. You know, various types. There's just a lot of metal coils and protected coils there. It's so art and science to all this stuff. It's fascinating, really. I'm still getting used to these uh, crossing boards here. It's, um, you don't want to stand it here because it can sort of lift up a little bit, but uh, I'm still not completely confident yet. The people that do sailing are pretty used to working on these type of, of things here. So yeah, it's a lot of balance. Because the rope is like underneath it on the bottom side, it's a bit harder to go up because, you know, it's not so easy. But going down seems to be easier because you can sort of just like put one foot like that and then as you move you're sort of balanced you know <laughs> sailing has evolved over thousands of years from the point where they first discovered that a sail can pull a boat and uh, it's really an art and a science you really need obviously expert tuition if you actually were to understand anything about this so uh, it's going to be a week of intensive learning as we figure the ropes out. Mm. Closing the water lid. Preparing the water hose for storage. So you release that one first yeah drop it in yeah get ready to release this one you can undo it all the way until the last piece yeah that goes underneath the hitch yeah and you just hold on to it there until the person at the front tells you to this release. is the lazy line a lazy line this is a 38 foot um boat and uh we've got to navigate it down like down there like so <laughs> this is uh quite intimidating when you first see this so yeah. so we pulled this dock thing up and then it locks in here. Terms, even it's kind of an older yeah. boat, so it's missing the pin for in here. And then we I do I just tie this on to stop this shaking around. No, and then we put these wires there to stop people from falling out the back. There's these two irons, Salter and Breck. And there's a little passage between them. And we are gonna head down between that passage. And depending on the wind direction, we stay on one side or the other side so that we don't drift right. uh, into the island. And then we keep going further south and then we go to this island far and in fact there's a town there called far which is very famous and we're going to try and stop there okay that's the plan for today okay. how many hours sailing is that from split uh, i think it should be three or four hours it depends on the wind, depends on the wind. Um, all right if if we have good wind we will keep going onto this island some more for the night and if we don't, then we will find somewhere to moor up uh, on this island here. There's lots of little... Uh, everywhere there's an anchor sign, you can stop. And you look to see which way the wind is going to blow that night, and then you stop the side of the island which has the most shelter. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the plan for today. Okay, Captain Garth. Good.
pretty close to be honest. Three meters <laughs> to go there. Ready with fenders? We have a problem with our instruments, we can only see depth, we can't see the wind or anything useful here. So the moment we had a motorboat, we get way to all sailboats. So we had to reset the system with a pin code. Now we can see our location and the wind direction, so that's really good. We can't sail without that. Of course we have to be very careful when we're going through this strait because everybody's basically going towards the same point here, so... We've got to stay alert. So underneath this boat we have this keel which stops the boat tipping over when the boat leans to one side. So we have this headland here, so what we have to do is we have to watch the depth so that we don't go, you know, below three meters because you don't want to hit obviously the keel on the land. We have this machine at the back that tells us the depth of a radar thing. The moment's about 50 meters. So we're just going to turn our aim for here where these guys are at. So the bigger ships have this AIS data and that's a global GPS database. So there's one big ship uh, just behind that one there which we'll show you on the system and then there's also another bigger boat over there and we can see that one on the system as well. So we put the sail up and we're just starting to feel a bit of wind now, you can see here on the water. Also here is the AIS data for, that's the, the ship, this just went around the island there and then we have the other one there and uh, that's the AIS data. for a place to put to uh, tie up to a boy or even to put an anchor down here this time. So we're gonna try and get one of those boys to hook onto. So we've secured this rope onto the boy here and we're just gonna drift behind this one and then we're going to take a dinghy to shore for a bit. So we just chuck the boat in the water, holding onto it with a rope here. There's somebody else putting up next to our boat there and you can see them 
hooking the, the rope there and then attaching it to uh, the rope on the boat. That's an elderly woman as well. Good point. We're just tying up our little boat there. This one here is a bit annoying because they actually tied it off at both ends so that if the wind drifts maybe in a different direction, then potentially our ship could clash with that one, which is, uh, I don't know why they bothered to tie a rope like that, but hey, so they're getting a little bit of help there from somebody. So here we are at the island of Va. It's a, an island that can only really be get, get to by boat, so very picturesque. Got a fort up there as well. Beautiful. Parking here is a bit like London, except closer, actually kissing each other. Look at that. <laughs> that is tight. Even the tour box are touching. Paintings on rocks and shells. I had to sleep a little bit on the boat because I was feeling seasick and uh, regretting anything for breakfast today. So I guess land lovers, they uh, take a while to get used to their on the sea. There's another view of our boat over there, and the dinghy's over there. There's another view of the island that we're at. We came we sail from Split to Var right now. We kicked it up to one of the boys like you see there, and then we're just going to go around to one of these restaurants here. And if you eat at this restaurant, you don't have to pay anything for the boy. And sometimes boys can cost like 50 or 60 euros a night. So. Well, when we when we finish, then I'll decide. Thanks very much for watching my vlog today sailing. I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the computer before I'm going to go to sleep outside here on the bed, which you can't see. So thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye-bye.